Committee for Health Accountability and Transparency welcome you to a continuing professional development course on primary healthcare renewal for optimal performance. The module two is on PAC leadership and governance. The outline of this module includes the introduction, institutional arrangements, key structures and functions, and limitations in the leadership and governance system in primary healthcare, and the conclusion. Looking at the learning objectives, on completion of this module, participants will be able to describe the governance arrangement in PAC in Nigeria, understand the key structures and their functions, and also understand the limitations in the leadership and governance system in primary healthcare in Nigeria. Primary healthcare was officially launched in Nigeria in 1986. The media national health policy was articulated in 1988. It recognized PAC as the foundation of the Nigeria health system. MPACD was established by Decree 29 of 1992, following the recommendation of high-level WHO review team. Primary healthcare is based on clearly defined principles that had to be translated into practice. It required the existence of leadership and governance structures and managerial processes. The national health policy has recognized the decentralization and devolution of responsibility and outlined a three-tier structure of national health system. Nigeria has political administrative structure consisting of three hierarchical levels like we mentioned before, the federal states and local, and primary healthcare framework perfectly fits this hierarchical arrangement and facilitate linkage between primary healthcare and socioeconomic development. The responsibility for PAC lies squarely with the local government administration. This development was designed to ensure that decision-making and support structures that are required for implementation of PAC are brought as close as possible to the people in their communities. Let us look at the key structures and functions in PAC delivery. The national health policy provides that structures and institutions at the federal, state, and local level provide overlapping support for primary health care development in the context of its broad socioeconomic disposition. This support may be considered strategic, technical, or operational. This diagram clearly outlines the institutional arrangements. At the federal level, you have the Federal Ministry of Health and the National Primary Health Care Development Agency. On the state level, you have the State Ministry of Health and State Primary Health Care Development Agency, and the Local Government Health Authority at the LGA level, and you have the community. And on both sides are other sectors and stakeholders, including the development partners that have one way or the other to interface with the, many, the state level structures and also with the federal level structures. Let us now look at leadership and governance in the PSC system. Leadership and governance it's about power relationships and stewardship roles of an overseer, a custodian, 
or a guardian. Primary healthcare leadership and governance structure determines how roles, power, and responsibility are assigned. They are controlled and coordinated, and how information flows between the different levels that we had earlier seen in the diagram. It is the system of decision making whereby directions are set, authority is exercised, events, actions, and activities are managed and monitored by governments and decision makers as they seek to achieve national health policy objectives. What is the essence of leadership and governance? Leadership and governance practices is about creating appropriate organizational structures and organs, system design, policy formulation and implementation, and regulation and control mechanisms of a wide range of actors and stakeholders. It also involves coordinating the roles and responsibilities of stakeholders, facilitating effective relationship with stakeholders and stakeholder organizations, establishing transparent and effective accountability mechanisms, detecting and correcting undesirable trends and distortions in programs and activities, and also articulating the case for health in national development. There are key leadership, management, and governance practices and roles in primary healthcare. And we take them one by one, first looking at the leadership roles and practices. A leadership involves scanning, which means collecting relevant data and information, analyzing the situation and the environment before taking decision or acting. It also involves focus, which requires paying attention to the problems and to keep eye on set goals, objectives, and targets. Leaders and managers concentrate and avoid distraction in execution of planned programs. The leadership is also about aligning and mobilizing, and it means aligning priorities to avoid overlaps, mobilize and allocate resources, making sure they are used in a responsible way for delivering services that are high quality, affordable, and also cost effective. Leadership also involves influence and inspiration, actions to inspire and motivate others to do more, to learn more, and to become good managers and future leaders. The aspect of management deals with the four functions of management which is planning. Planning requires selecting missions and objectives as well as actions or activities to achieve them. Organizing means establish an intentional structure of roles for people to fill in an organization. And implement means putting decisions into effect or execution. And monitor and evaluate requires monitoring, measuring, and correcting individual and organization performance to ensure that activities conform to plans. Finally, looking at the governance roles, it involves cultivating accountability to foster a decision-making environment that is based on systems and structures that support integrity, transparency, participation, and inclusion. It also involves engaging stakeholders by identifying, engaging, and collaborating with diverse stakeholders representing the full spectrum of interested parties in the health sector, and set strategic direction, keep a collective vision of the ideal state of a priority health area and the process for reaching it. And finally, it has to do with steward resources, raising, mobilizing, and allocating resources, making sure they are used in a responsible way for delivering services that are of high quality, 
that is affordable and also cost effective. Let us look at the functions of governance structures at various levels. At the national level, the mandate basically is strategic and informs to formulate policies and provide strategic oversight. At the state level, it provides oversight for policy implementation. And the operational level, which is the LGA level, is to operationalize and implement programs. And at the community level, to collaborate to identify needs, they develop health plans and activities and oversee the use of uh, health resources. Looking at the key structures, like we said earlier, the federal level is responsible for strategic support. The support includes the development of policies, strategies and plans setting standards and norms to promote the advancement of primary health care through the National Council on Health, the Federal Ministry of Health, and also the National Primary Health Care Development Agency. Specifically, the role of the Federal Ministry of Health includes providing oversight over the name PACDA through the Office of Honorable Minister of Health to whom the agency periodically provides reports and briefs. The ministry has representation in the agency's governing board and this enables the ministry to provide technical guidance in the formulation of appropriate PAC policies and guidelines. The Ministry provides coordination platform for development of sector-wide strategies and strategic plans such as the National Strategic Health Development Plan. The Ministry also provides coordination platform for health system partnership and provides leadership and coordinates the health management information system. There is no primary health care department in the Federal Ministry of Health. However, there are PAC related departments such as food and drugs, family health, public health, and also the national control programs. They all collaborate with MPACD, the states and LGAs in the implementation of programs and also with the development partners. There is the National Council on Health. NCH is the highest policy organ of the country's health system. It is comprised of the Honorable Minister of Health and the State Commissioners for Health, with the Honorable Minister of Health as its chairman. The Council's function is advisory. It advises the federal government through the Honorable Minister of Health on the development, implementation, and administration of national health policy and guidelines, and also on technical matters regarding the organization, delivery, and distribution of health services, and on other matters assigned by the Honorable Minister of Health. Let us now look at the role of MPACDA. The National Primary Healthcare Development Agency is the anchor of the federal government's support to primary healthcare development. The functions of the agency include providing technical support to states and local governments through its field officers in the zonal and state offices in the development, management, and implementation of primary healthcare, and also supporting monitoring and evaluation of primary health care. Other functions of MPACD include promoting the development of human resources for PAC development, promoting primary health care system research. The agency has the sole responsibility for procurement of vaccines in the country. 
and also provide technical and logistic support for Im national immunization program and finally mobilization of resources at the national and international levels. On the role of the State Ministry of Health, the Nigerian Constitution gives each state some measure of independence in health program implementation. However, the federal level can provide policy directive and guidance subject to approval at the National Council on Health, but individual states are at liberty to decide whether or not to follow this. At the state level, the State Minister of Health and the State Primary Health Care Development Agency where in existence oversees the allocation of resources, the supervision monitoring, and also the evaluation of LGA health programs. However, prior to the current efforts at governance reforms under the PAC Under One Roof Initiative, there exists multiple administrative framework at the state level with concurrent and overlapping responsibility for primary health care. In addition to state minister of health, the minister of local government and local government service commission, and sometimes the office of the executive governor, play significant roles in primary health care development. These multiple lines of responsibility constitute great risk to effective program implementation at the LGA level. The State Minister of Health equally provides oversight function over state PAC agency through the Office of Honorable Commissioner for Health, to whom the agency periodically provides reports and briefs similar to the way the MPACD does to Federal Minister of Health. The ministry has representation in the state PAC development agency's governing board, and this enables the ministry to provide technical guidance in the formulation and implementation of PAC programs in the states. Okay. Where state PAC development agency is not in existence, the Department of Primary Health Care and the State Minister of Health provide technical guidance in the formulation and the implementation or PAC programs in the state. The ministry provides coordinating platform for development of sector-wide strategies and strategic plans, such as the state strategic head development plan. The ministry also provides coordinating platform for state health system partnership. The State Minister of Health provides leadership and coordinates the health management information system in the state. Where state PAC agency exists, there is no department of PAC in the State Minister of Health. However, there are PAC related departments that should collaborate with the State PAC Development Agency and the LGAs in the implementation of programs. Let us now look at State Primary Healthcare Development Agency. It is part of a new governance reform going on in primary healthcare system designed to address the existence of multiple administrative framework that we have mentioned earlier with concurrent and overlapping responsibility for primary healthcare and the risk it constituted to effective program implementation. The functions of the state PAC agency are similar to the functions of National Primary Healthcare Development Agency, but this is at the state level. And it provides a single administrative framework and managerial processes conceived to improve the allocation and distribution of financial and material resources, provide appropriate technical and management training of primary healthcare managers and various categories of health workers, and also to monitor and evaluate primary healthcare. Let us look at other roles of state PAC development agency. 
The creation of state PAC Dublin agency enables the roles of multiple MDAs to be streamlined so that the Minister of Local Governments, the Local Government Service Commission, and the Office of the Executive Governor cease to have significant role to play in primary healthcare implementation. However, it should be noted that the responsibility for primary healthcare implementation remains at the local government health authorities. Let's look at the National Council on Health. Though there is no explicit provision in the National Health Policy and the National Health Act on the creation of State Council on Health, many states have established the Council of Health in a manner similar to National Council on Health. It is comprised of Honorable Commissioner for Health, all the directors in the State Minister of Health, and the heads of local government health authorities with the Commissioner as its chairman. The Council's function is also advisory to advise the State Government through the Honorable Commissioner for Health on technical matters relating to the organization, delivery and distribution of health services and other matters assigned by the Honorable Commissioner for Health. Looking at the Local Government Health Authority or the Local Government Health Department, the LGA is the third layer of government and has responsibility for primary healthcare implementation. It is the closest level of government to the people where they live and work. The population of LGA vary from 150,000 to 500,000. Following the development of guidelines for reorganization of LGA Health Department by Federal Minister of Health in 1988, the existing health and medical departments were unified and designated as the primary health care department. The PAC department is headed by the PAC coordinator, or in some cases, the director of PAC, and he or she is the chief health officer of the LGA and the medical officer of health. He has the responsibility for all the health programs of the LGA and delegating responsibility for particular interventions and support activities to deputies and assistants who are responsible for various programs. Each LGA has 10 to 12 political wards and each ward has a ward supervisor who oversees and coordinates primary health care service delivery within the ward. The LGA PSC Technical Committee, the PSC Coordinator or Director of PSC, together with program officers such as for planning, monitoring, evaluation, immunization, disease control, reproductive, maternal and child health, family planning, essential drugs, health promotion, community mobilization, and all the ward supervisors form the LGA Technical Committee. The head of the LGA health authorities, like we say, is sometimes designated as a PAC their coordinator or director of PAC. He or she is the technical and administrative officer in charge of all health matters and is the advisor to the LGA authority on technical matters regarding the organization, delivery and distribution of health services in the LGA. Therefore, he or she has responsibility for planning, budgeting, implementation and administration of primary health care in the local government area. He or she is also the secretary of LGA PAC management committee, which is the highest administrative organ of the LGA PAC system, which is chaired by the LGA chairman and he or 
She is the chairman of LGA PAC Technical Committee, where technical decisions on PAC implementation are taken. He or she is the medical officer of health and therefore performs public health functions such as collating and transmitting health management information, including weekly notification of communicable diseases and managing adverse public health situations such as epidemics and disasters and ensuring compliance with all public health laws. There is governance reform at the LGA level. The current efforts aimed at LGA PAC governance reform under the PAC Under One Roof Initiative has called for reorganization and redesignation of LGA PAC department as the LGA Health Authority. The reform is aimed at alignment with the state PAC development agency professionalization to make it more efficient and effective. It is also expected that the authority will be isolated from political interference from the LGA administration. The LGA Health Authority is expected to be under the state PAC development agency from where it should draw its funding and headed by a director and performs all the functions it is performed by the LGA PAC department. There is the PAC managerial process, and this is the mechanism established for a collective decision making and for promoting community participation and intersectorial collaboration at each level. The process is through the committee system, and the committee exists from the periphery upwards and includes the village development committees, the world development committees, and the LGA PAC management committee. Let us look at limitations in leadership and governance system in primary healthcare. The first is fragmentation of health systems in the states. There are two vertical silos in the health system in the states, one comprising of network of primary healthcare facilities managed by LGA administration and supported by the state PAC development boards or multiple MDAs where functional state PAC agents are not in existence. And the second care facility, that is the general hospitals that are managed by the state minister or head or state hospital services, as the case may be. These two systems are not in any way effectively linked functionally, administratively, or by management process. They are not on speaking terms. The rather sharp division of health responsibilities between the state and the LGA is a threat to functional unity of the entire health system, particularly at the LGA level. And this was highlighted by the WHO review in 1992. The second issue is lack of vertical integration in the LGA health system. As a result of division of responsibility in the healthcare delivery between the state and the LGAs, the LGA health system is lacking its apex since hospitals are not part of LGA responsibility but are owned and managed by the state governments. Consequently, the Nigeria LGA health system is an LGA primary healthcare system and thus lack vertical integration. This design does not in any way fit into the WHO district health system. The other aspect which is a great limitation is inadequate technical and management support to the LGAs. Technical and management support to the LGAs on project formulation and implementation, integrated supportive supervision and monitoring visits are crucial ingredients for transforming PAC policies into concrete action. While the federal government through the National Primary Healthcare Administration has sustained its practice of deploying technical officers to the states to strengthen primary healthcare implementation, the state-level technical support to LGAs remains 
a key strategy to meet the needs of the LGAs. Unfortunately, the states have not much similar efforts at the LGA level. All states should make adequate budgetary allocation for LGA PAC support in consonance with their responsibilities as provided in national health policy. The conclusion on this model is that primary health care is based on clearly defined principles that are required to be translated into practice. Thus, it requires the existence of leadership and governance structures and managerial processes. The national health policy provides that structures and institutions at the federal, state, and local level provide overlapping support for primary health care development in the context of its broad socio-economic disposition. These supports are considered strategic, technical, or operational. PAC leadership and governance structure determines how roles, power, and responsibility are assigned, controlled, and coordinated, and how PAC information flows between different levels. However, there are multiple limitations in the leadership and governance system that have continued to undermine the performance of the PAC system. Let us take this assignment. Poor leadership and governance in PAC system create room for poor delivery of health services. What strategies will you suggest to enhance good governance in PAC in Nigeria? It is recommended as an online submission to be marked CPD PAC assignment of not more than 500 words and to be submitted to IHAT Nigeria at gmail.com Our dream for a strong health system and better health outcomes will remain a dream unless we work for it. Working for it requires good understanding of the ideal of primary health care. Strong leadership, effective management and transparent governance is the key to effective delivery of primary health care.